So to start skinning, uh, pretty much just start right around the legs. Just wrap around other leg, wrap around, go between the camera and skinning at the same time. And all this is is just a, a jumper cable attached with a little bit of chain to the wall. Then I take the knife from one leg to the other and you can see a bit of a color differential. So you got a white belly, you got gray back, and this is kind of a transitional phase to where I'm trying to follow this color line. Color line here, I'm going to go to the tail, to the tail, color line here. Just a matter of getting it started. Usually squirrels are kind of a, a tightly skinned animal. For something so small they also have fairly thick skin. Maybe they're getting this fillet knife started in there. Come on now. There we go. Try my best not to cut into the meat. You know, it'll happen. Part of squirrels is you're going to get fur on the meat as well. But Definitely not a speed skinning video by any means. I think I skin a beaver faster than a squirrel. Just trying to get the knife started. So we got that cut made. So now we got, all we gotta do is get the fur peeled away. Careful that this tendon doesn't get pulled. So it's good leg or meat on the leg that you'll rip off if you grab that tendon. I'm still attached slightly on the back here. Take the knife, cut that, cut that. There we go. Now just pull that meat right down the leg. Like I said, try not to pull that portion that's attached to the tendon. Trying to save as much meat as we can for the table. It's a matter of kind of... I'm going to try a different angle here. Notice I'm wearing gloves. I wear gloves everything I skim. Squirrels are definitely the toughest animal for me to skim. I don't know what it is about them. If we can get the knife started. Trying to salvage the meat. It always seems to be a hassle of sorts. I have no idea why. I don't know, even know why I'm trying to salvage the, the fur. There's not much value to it. I'm gonna get it tanned, make a little wall hanger.
And right there, it's the pecker bone. Just take it, pull it right through. And as you come up on the testicles, make sure you're not going to rip open the gut cavity. Eat on the fur, not too much. Like I said, definitely not a speed skinning video by any means. Cut like that. Now I got the tail. Tail is exposed. That's where now I can get my tail stripper. There we go. Pull that back. Got the tail stripper. Size it out. Small hole. Put it on and grab the hindquarters of the squirrel and pull it and it just pulls the tail right out. But later when we process the fur we'll split the tail open. But now that that's all done, now at this point we just take the, the hide and attach both feet into this jumper cable here. Maybe. Before I get up here, I'm going to cut the front feet off so it just pulls right through. Cut the front feet off, take a side cutter. I cut right at the joint between the foot and the leg, cutting onto the bone rather than onto the foot, the leg side of the joint. Feet. Let's take this. And, oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. That works a little better. I'm trying to pull. It's a little bit cold. It's getting a little easier when they're warm. But this one's got in a trap. It wasn't shot, so by the time I got to it, it was already cold. I think it was fairly fresh because it wasn't frozen and it's been warm, not warm, it's warm for late November, you know today is slightly above freezing. Then once you get to the legs, you can stick your fingers between the legs and the skin and just pull right through. I'm gonna take that and pull, and then you'll end up getting to the ears right here. You'll see, it'll look a little bit different. You'll notice a, a change between the skin and the skull. And then I'll take that. And I try to cut kind of a happy medium, not too far back, not too far forward. There you go. That's cut. If you feel like it, you can cut right there, but you can just pull. So then you pull. And when I pull, I'm kind of trying to put a twisting motion. You know, like imagine you're breaking a stick, twisting. So I'm, I'm grabbing the, the fur and grabbing the skull. I'm kind of twisting the fur, or I'm breaking the fur off of the skull. And then you'll come up to the eyes. So there's an eye. There's an eye. And I try to start back. Like there's the eyeball. You start on the back side of the eyeball. And you come forward. 
you'll get the eyelids with it. Come back to the other one. Same thing. If you start on the eye, you'll get the eyelids with it. And now as I come forward, I want to make sure that I'm going to get all that cut. There's that last final cut. There you go. There's the one. Then on to this next one. Last final cut. Then you just take it and you bring it forward. And at this point I just twist back and forth and I'm pulling out to the nose. And then you're to the cheeks. And some muskrat skinning habits come in here and just take the knife and you put it in and it takes a little bit of habit of knowing where to poke, but I'm poking into the mouth and then back out and I'm twisting the knife out. I don't know if you saw that rotation. I'll try to show it here. So then this side I'm coming from the top. Maybe if I rotate this. I'm coming from the top, down, into the mouth, and out the bottom. And since my knife is sharp, I just take it and I twist and kind of pull it out. Then come up to the nose, and just through habits, you can learn where the nose connects into the fur, into the skull. So that's going to be right here, this little soft spot. You can take your knife and you can feel. It'll be a little bit soft. Hard, right there, and soft. And when I'm doing that, I always use about the back inch of the knife to where I don't dull it on the next critter, or for opening the next critter, I should say. You know, that's to kind of start it. I start about right there, kind of bust my way through. That way, if I'm not dull on the tip, if I use the tip and I go to skin another critter, well then it's going to be dull on me right away. Then I'll come out, and then I typically don't leave bottom lips on anything I skin. So then right here is the bottom lip. You'll be open on the mouth. It's kind of hard to show you with the setup I got. So right there, you can see the, the mouth opening, and I'll take my knife and I'll stick it into the mouth. And this is not for taxidermy skinning, this is just for kind of a little bit of fur put up, nothing special. I'm trying to get by the tooth here, you gotta get in front of the tooth, and then you come out, and you cut it, and then that bottom lip is left on there. Trying to focus that as best as I can. Right there is the bottom lip. And from there you should be able, since that's cut, you should be able to just pop it right off. And then there's our squirrel. And then when we come to put that up later, we flesh it a little bit. We're going to trim the legs. But that's that for now. We're going to throw that one in the freezer. And when we go do a little bit of fur put up later this winter, we'll get that on video with it. Put fur out to go in the freezer. There's a squirrel. And now with this squirrel, we are going to cut the tail off right here at the base. Put that back over here with the feet. Usually I got a bucket right on hand, but I don't at this instance. So then right here, we're gonna cut. That off. I'm gonna cut the testicles off. Come, we're just gonna leave one foot on. So there's the penis bone. Cut the penis off. Coming up to the head. You know, usually with that, I'll start on the bottom. I'll just cut the head. Cut up around the sides, all the way around, and then you should be able to just take it. Twist, pull, now the head's off. And now we're going to take the hind end, we're going to clean that up a little. Just while we're here, might as well cut this back foot off. And now we're coming up the guts. Be careful that we don't cut into any intestines or stomach. So we're just kind of being nice and slow, precise. 
There we go. Open sesame. Now it's open. Now there's the guts. Not to get too gory out here, but that's what we're doing. So we're processing a squirrel for meat. It's going to be a little gory. So there's that. Come back here. So here's the bladder. You take that and you pinch it. Try not to squeeze it out. We'll cut the bladder out. Let that out with the guts. Try not to spill it. Well, looking back up here, we have the liver and the lungs. I honestly don't feel like eating liver or lungs. You have kidneys. Kidneys can come out if you want to. You need kidneys. I'm not starving. I'm not eating squirrel kidney. Survival situation, you could eat squirrel kidney. Right there's a lever. Same thing. I don't feel like eating squirrel liver. And right here, poke your finger into the, the chest cavity. Then up in the chest cavity, you can take the lungs and the heart out. One quick smooth pull. Same thing. I don't feel like eating a squirrel heart. No. That's about that. I'm going to come back here into the hind end. I'm going to break the pelvis bone and I'm just going to make sure that all the poop is cleaned out. Poop, intestines, guts. And we're going to bring that inside and wash it, but I should need to show you that part. I mean, it's pretty basic. Clean blood off, blood cloths. clean squirrel. I'm gonna bring that in, make some soup, put it with some grouse. But yeah. I'll show you when it comes to putting up the squirrel fur, we'll show you that portion. So after we got it scunned, we got the fur. I had this in the freezer for a few months. All we gotta do is turn it inside out, leather side out. Pretty simple. Like so. And from there, I just slide it onto a mink stretcher, or a mink sized wood stretcher. I'm turn the camera over here. camera. Okay, so that's on the stretcher. I just sit, I kind of feel around my pole. Okay, so that tail needs to be split. Make sure that it's not twisted. You can tell by the coloration, that frosty color that goes back. So make sure the tail is nice and straight. And then I just use a knife to split it. So in this case I just got a simple replaceable blade on a knife sometimes, or most of the time you use a fillet knife. I take that fillet knife, I slide it in as best as I can. Fillet is just a hair tall. There we go. Trying to get it started. And then I just take my thumb and I slide it behind the knife to help kind of rip it out. Get back down to where I can push it in again. And then if you put your thumb behind, just to put a little bit of tension on that tail between the knife and the fur, then it's good to go. Be careful you don't get the tip broke off. And then I just use a simple hoop style pelt scraper to get some of the excess material off. You have some around the cheeks. I got mine backwards, my bad. Around the cheeks. Underneath the arms, so the armpits, there'll be some fat and some meat. 
when you're all said and done, there will be a very thin layer of meat residue on the back. It's called the saddle. You don't have to worry about that. It's just a very thin layer of tissue that will be left on. So then onto the belly, on the groin area, there will be some fat. On the hips, there's just a hair of fat, not much. Then there's a little bit of leg tissue left on there. And same thing like the other side, a little bit on the hips. leg tissue that was on there that was left over from my opening cut. My knife dug just a hair too deep. Okay, so I've got a little tiny speck on the back. You don't need to use a scraper like this. You could use a spoon. You could use the back of your knife. You could use a knife just to kind of work it off slowly. Okay, and I'm going to turn it back on its belly. These legs, I got those just a hair too long, so I'm going to cut those off. And then how I got this set up, is I like to push it against the wall here, board on my, my waist, and the nose of the stretcher against the wall. I take the tail, I pull it center, I drop one pin just to keep it a little bit taut. And I take the legs and I pull those on the back side and I widen them out between the stretcher and the tail. Same thing with the other side. Bring it down. Between the stretcher and the tail. So that's how that looks. Then I take the tail, pull the remainder down. Throw one pin on the bottom just to keep it straight. I'll put one on the nose up here just in case something happens during drying. And then the front legs, you can leave them as they are, but how I usually do a lot of my furs is I do two pins pulled slightly up on the legs here in from the edge of the stretcher and then one on the bottom of each leg and then I run it parallel with the edge of the board. That's to still allow them to dry uniform. And then we take our belly board. Actually before we put the belly board in I like to investigate make sure that the bottom it's nice and clean, uniform. Then we put that belly board up in there. And then we leave it to dry. So there's the pin on the nose. There's the pin on the feet. There's the belly. And that's how I have it pinned on the back. Hope you enjoyed it. Keep on watching.